Hello everyone, today I want to tell you about our updated crawler Netpeak Spider 3.2. It was a long awaited release for us because we added PDF report, tons of useful data about issues, opportunity to crawl website that use JavaScript and a whole lot more. And this video is about all the details in this update. JavaScript is not a rare case anymore. The number of websites that were built using this technology or have plans to implement JS is continuously growing. Unfortunately, high-tech solutions not only give us the new opportunities, but also cause problems. That's why I'm happy to say that, starting from now, Netpeak Spider will help you to fix that. To enable this function, you need to go to the Settings, General tab and tick the Enable JavaScript Rendering checkbox. By default, the program will execute JavaScript for 2 seconds and it will suit the majority of cases. But if it's not enough for the website you crawl, you can set a longer rendering process period. I wanted to say that this function is available only in crawler and usually website winters are not so sweet. If your scripts take too long to execute, it's better to think about the optimizing of the code of the website page. Next thing is, program will execute JavaScript code only for 200 OK HTML pages, not to waste your valuable resources where it's not necessary. When you want to enable the JavaScript, please think again either it's necessary for the current calling or not because it will make the crawling process much slower. The tool will send an additional request to the Chromium, will load JS and CSS files and execute the JavaScript code. And of course, all of these things takes a lot of time. Thus, please do not enable it every time and think either it's need for the current crawling or not because the majority of websites really do not need to be crawled with the JavaScript rendering function. I want to underline several useful things. During rendering, crawler blocks all requests to analytics services like Google Analytics, Yandex Metrica or similar one not to hurt your data accuracy. We will use cookies to speed the checkbox in the advanced tab of the crawling settings. Then iframe and images will not be loaded during the rendering. And the last thing is JavaScript rendering is limited by threads. It means that you can use only 25 threads for JavaScript rendering. For example, you used 100 threads in the general tab of the crawling settings and it means that crawler will scan 100 documents simultaneously, but JavaScript will lag behind and use only 25 of them at once just because it's not so fast as the regular crawling. And of course, uh, to sum up all the things I've told about JavaScript rendering, I want to say that as Morpheus in Matrix told us, choose wisely. Either you need JavaScript rendering for the next crawl or not. We created a PDF report that will help SEO specialists quickly determine the website optimization quality without any additional efforts. All the key information for website audit is gathered there and waiting for your conclusions and recommendations. We tried so hard not to make it only informative, but also pleasing to the eyes of your customers or colleagues when you send it as an implementation task. Before moving on to the report, I wanted to say that it will be useful for the sales teams that offer SEO services, because you can get a brief overview of the website problems. After reading this report, you can evaluate the project quality and then go further to negotiate with the customers. If you haven't seen our PDF report yet, I have two news for you. First you missed a lot in this super beautiful report. And the second thing is, don't worry, we'll briefly run through the, all the things in this video. So let's move on and start the unboxing of this report. 
To download this report, go to the export menu of the tool and choose Express Audit of the Optimization Quality. Title page greets you with a screenshot of the initial page of the website that you crawl or if you will crawl a list of URLs, it will be a nice picture representing a list of URLs. Right after that, you will see all the navigational links that will help you quickly surf through the report. Have you seen overview tab in a sidebar? Here is its counterpart on steroids. Here you will see the crawling mode. It can be either checking the website or crawling a list of URLs. Then it will be an initial URL or the first URL on the list and the number of selected parameters during the crawling. Then we have the number and types of crawled URLs and URLs with major issues. Here you will see all the errors and warnings um, that have been found on the majority of the pages of the website that you crawled. Then we show you the content types of internal and external URLs that have been crawled and top host. So it's like the number of the most frequent domains uh, that have been crawled. For example, it can be used to determine the most frequent host during the crawling the list of URLs. If you just choose a lot of links or a lot of pages from different sources, then crawl them and then you can understand maybe some of them belongs to the same host. Next section is URL structure. It's like a short overview of the site structure report that you can export from the export menu in the tool and here you will find all the URL segments that have been found during the crawling and like how many URLs contain this URL segment and also percentage of these URLs. Then we have status codes report that show you how many different status codes have been received during the crawling of your website and also if you crawl the external URLs too so you will see the status codes of them too and the thing I want to wish you guys is to have as short table for status codes as you can of course I wish you them to be only 200 OK codes. Then we have crawling and indexing section. Here you will find all the problems with the indexing and I want to say that all these graphics built using only the internal URLs. These two diagrams are familiar for you because you have seen them in the dashboard tab of the tool, but the, all the other ones are new. For example, here we show you the content of MetaRobots and XRobots tag on your website and we separate all the instructions to several groups. For example, instructions that are not restricting anything are highlighted in green, instructions that affect crawling and results in SERP are highlighted in yellow, instructions that affect indexing are highlighted in red, and all the other found instructions are highlighted in black. And the table that I really like is canonical use, so it means what was the content of this tag all over the pages that have been crawled. Why? Because you can quickly understand how many pages of your website are really canonicalized. Click and URL depth. Here you will find how many clicks from the initial page it takes to get to the deepest part of your website or how many URL segments your pages usually have. If you see a lot of pages with a click depth more than four or with URL depth more than four, it's worth to think either it's like a necessary decision, maybe it's better to change this situation because if it takes so long to get to some of the pages, it can like confuse your users and even confuse the search robots. Then we have load speed section, which represents the time that it actually takes to load the page. Here we show only the time till first byte and uh, you can under quickly understand using our diagrams what the max time that have been that have been waited uh, to get the data what was the mean number and i think that the interesting thing here is the median 
value because you can understand what's in the middle of all these numbers. And if these diagrams is like familiar to you, so you have seen them before, you haven't seen them before in the view of HTML pages and images and resources. So on the first page, you can see the response time of internal and external HTML pages, and then it's the response time of internal and external images and resources. Next section is HTTP and HTTPS protocols, where we show you all the pages that contain secure or insecure protocols. Why? Because if, you, if your website uses HTTPS secure protocol and some of the documents in it use HTTP protocol, it can cause mixed content issue and users even may see a warning in their browser and it can actually give you a like, bad impact. So, first of all, it's 21st century we are living in and if you're still using HTTP protocol, I recommend you guys to switch to HTTPS. And of course, we even have an free SSL certificates all over the web, so just start migrating. It's, it's a good decision and I wish all of us are using it nowadays. So let's make internet faster, better and secure together. Then we have content optimization sections where you can find all the duplicates, uh, all the missing titles and so on. And if the first page presents that duplicates and missing titles, descriptions, H1s, then the second page represents the content optimization. So, I mean, the short, which of them are short, which of them are too long. And if you see a lot of parts of these diagrams highlighted in red, it's a good opportunity for you to optimize them and get better rankings. Uh, also, I, want, I forget to say that if you see that some of the H1s or titles or descriptions are duplicated, please uh, think about the better optimization of this text because it can cause the keyword cannibalization problem. I, I will say about that later. Also, we added the diagrams that shows the number of characters on the page, number of words on the page, and size of images that cr our crawler found uh, during the crawling of the website. The next section is my favorite one, it's issues, because it represents the best, how problematic your website is. Usually we all think that our websites are better than they are actually is, so they, we think that they did better job than they actually does. So this section shows you all the problem, because first of all, we show you how many pages contain errors, warnings, and notices with the like, funny emojis. Then you will see the top major issues by number of URLs. It's very useful table because it will show you really like the growth points for your SEO on the website. Because we all understand that if you will fix like 31,000 of redirects, it may give you more impact than fixing three broken links. Of course, if it's not the main page of your website, but still, it's a huge opportunity to grow your search traffic. So just pay attention to this table. And then we show you three tables with the errors, warnings and notices that contains issues useful link to read about this issue, also, that, also an example of the page that contains this issue, for example, for broken pages, it's httplabs.opera.com uh, and number of URLs with this issue. We haven't added uh, the exact URLs that contains this issue to the PDF report because we, we don't think it's really useful because Everybody will use uh, the spreadsheet to work with uh, such a big uh, data, not the PDF format of files. And the same for warnings and notices. And at the end, we show you not detected issues. Do you remember, I wish you guys to have a shorter table for 
status codes so so you should have only 200 okay status codes on your website so the table will be small here guys I, w I wanted to wish you as long table as you can so just all the issues I wish to be not detected on your website and also I wanted to say that please like make a short suggestion how many issues our crawler will find on your website then crawl your website and compare these numbers actually who gave more and I will be happy if you will write the results of this like small test in the comments below on the YouTube or on our blog uh, I will be happy to be sure that my idea is true because we actually tested it before on one of the online marketing conferences where we asked more than a thousand of people like hey make a suggestion how many issues our crawler will find on your website and then we tested it and actually the majority of people were like a little bit of sad about that because we found a lot of issues on their website that they even haven't thinking about at the end of the report we have terms so if you don't understand something in the phrases that we use during the report or something like that here is the place that will help you with understanding all of them and the next section is settings so we show you all the parameters and crawling settings that were used uh, when we was creating this PDF report so you can understand either that considering the robots.txt instructions was used have you been using scraping or not how many crawled URLs or other things that you can define in crawling settings and the last page of the report tells you some information about us as a company so about the netpeak software here you will find all the useful links about our tools you will find what tasks our software can solve and who use our software and also useful links to help Santa to our customer support or blog I will be happy if you will serve all, all the through uh, the links and uh, get more information about us actually that's it about the PDF report and I wanted to ask you about one more thing if you like the report press thumbs up here if you have any ideas how to improve the report how to make your day-by-day -day analysis tasks easier with our report just write all of them in the comments below I will be really happy so let's switch to the another section it's extended issue descriptions as I told you before a lot of people think that their website is doing better than it actually does when you see a huge number of issues in a sidebar the first questions uh, that appear in your head is what the reason of this problem of how can it hurt my website how to fix it and of course where to read more about that we got like a thousands of uh, user messages to our support team with the questions like how to fix it and so on and fortunately now we have built in library in our software to see the answers on all these questions click on any issue on the sidebar and you will find what the reason of this issue what was the target parameter for detecting this issue how can it hurt your website how to fix it and several useful links that we want you to read to understand better this issue also we have made a special page on our website that will help you to understand all the issues better so it's just a really big page a really big article uh, that contains all the descriptions of the issues and also even if you also of course you can read this article on the website using your tablet smartphone or if you want you can even print it it's up to you but also we have added a special report about the issues it called issues overview plus descriptions when you export it you will have a spreadsheet 
with all the descriptions of the found, found problems during the crawling. So just press it and you will find the special spreadsheet with the explanation of each of them, which you can, you can even send this spreadsheet to your colleague or to the customer to make it easy for them to understand all the things that you also send to them. So it will help them with the, like a small onboarding with the report that you send to them. So I'm, I'm done with the extended issues descriptions. So let's move on to the other changes in our software and uh, stay tuned. Let's briefly run through the other changes in NetPeak Spider 3.2. We changed issue severity for several issues. First of them moved to the errors. Let me explain why. First of them is duplicate H1. Why? Because it can cause a keyword cannibalization issue. It means that search engine will be confused. What page is more relevant for the target keyword? Second issue is 500 error pages. Why? Because it can be a sign of, a, of the huge problem on your server. But sometimes it still can be just a maintenance uh, and but still it's better to recheck why server responded with 500 status code. Third problem that is migrated that has been migrated to the errors is, is canonical chain. Yeah. Uh, why? Because search robot may just ignore the real canonical URL and it causes a lot of duplicates in SERP and traffic losses. And the last problem that, that is now an error is bad AMP HTML format issue. Why we placed it to the errors? Because if you spend a lot of your resources, a lot of your time to create these skyrocket pages, the last thing that you want to see is that these pages have some kind of issues. That's why we try to attract as much of your attention as we can, placing it to the high severity problems. Then I will tell you about the issues that are now notices. First of them is multiple H1 and the second one is max URL length. Why? Because even John Miller told us that you shouldn't worry about that. Multiple H1 is the common thing for, uh, for HTML5, for most of the content management systems and just don't worry about that. What about that maximum URL length? Um, he said that if you have less than 2,000 uh, characters in the URL, like search engine will be fine with that. But it still should be human friendly. So better think about uh, how to create human friendly, not short. The next change uh, is about the bad base tag format. Now uh, it's in the notices because it's kind of rarely used and also even if you have some kind of problems there, search robot may just ignore this tag. The next change is several issues and parameters now have new names. For example, it's broken pages. Previously it was broken links and when uh, you were pressing this issue, you thought that it will, be all, it will be a list of all the broken links, but you saw only the broken pages. Now it's the broken pages issue and to get all the broken links, to get the broken links report, you need to click on the issue report button or go to the expert menu, special issue reports, broken links. That's how you can get the broken links report. And the second thing is we changed the issue name of the duplicate canonical URL into the identical canonical URLs. Why? Just to reduce the negative perception of this issue because it's far from being as bad as duplicate H1s, duplicate titles or descriptions. Next, we changed the logic uh, for determining the issue. First of them, it's again bad base tag format. Previously, it was shown if you have the relative URL in the base tag. Now, we show it only if the href attribute of this link has an incorrect form. So, 
maybe they are broken or something like that, uh, just to make it easier to explain. And the second thing is we changed the algorithm of work with the canonical URL parameter. Let me open it to give more understanding. Yeah, here it is. So what we have changed. By default, Netpeak Spider shows only the absolute URLs in the canonical tag as Google asks us. Thus, if the canonical tag contains the relative URL, you will see the null value in the table. But we understand that some of you may still use the relative URL in the canonical tag. That's why we created the checkbox called crawl relative canonical URLs. When you use it during the crawling of the website if we will find any relative URLs in the canonical tags or in the head section of the document we'll transform it to the absolute form and add it to the table don't worry in the future we will add more agile work with the canonical URLs we already have like a huge plans with that so just please hold on a little bit and we will add issues and so on to make it more easier and comfortable for you to work with the canonical URLs. Next, we have changed the sorting in the issues tab of the sidebar. So now at the top you will see the most severe and the most frequent issues. Then we have two more changes and I'm done. The first of them is determining the URLs as internal. When you crawl a list of URLs, if all of them have the same host, all of them will be considered as internal in the, all the following reports. But if at least one of them contain another host, all of them will be external. Remember about it when you see the reports from after the crawling is done. And the last change, may, may, maybe it's not so good for some of you, but we stopped supporting Windows operating systems with versions older than 7 Service Pack 1. Why? Because we used the latest versions of the .NET framework to build this update to enable JavaScript rendering, and we couldn't avoid this requirement because the older versions just do not support this framework. Uh, I wanted to ask you, just if you use older versions, please update your operating system because you will find problems not only with the Netpeak Spider but with a lot of other software that want to make their uh, programs better, that want to enrich their uh, performance and the ways how you can use it. Okay, I'm done with the changes. Uh, let's briefly run through all of the changes that I told you in this video. Just a brief summary. Let's go and finish it. Let's briefly run through the, all the changes in Netpeak Spider 3.2. We have added JavaScript rendering and now you can work with this fast-growing technology using our software. Second. We have implemented the PDF report right after the crawling is done, so it can help SEO specialists, project and sales managers to quickly evaluate the website's problems. Third, we have added a tons of useful data about issues in the software. So it's like a small built-in library that can help you with the following questions. What's the reason of this problem? How can it hurt your website? How to fix it? Where to read more about this problem? So it's like a useful links. And all of the things can be exported in a spreadsheet. It, you can read in our help Santa on your tablet, smartphone, or like print it. I don't know. Use it uh, like in a way you like it. And the last thing I wanted to say that we have made more than 50 changes in the big spider 3.2 that is like not so uh, bright and maybe you even will not see uh, them but they are made to make your user experience better to ease your understanding of our software 
And I wanted to say that a lot of changes in the sub in, in the Netflix party and checker have been made because some of our users send us a feature request or some uh, problems that they faced uh, during the software uh, during they used the software. So don't do not be shy. Just uh, knock knock to our support team and uh, like give us any ideas that you have on how you can how you want us to improve the software to ease your day by day uh, tasks. So thanks a lot for your attention. It was a great time uh, for me to tell you about all the updates. I, I'm happy that you uh, watched it till the end. And as always, I want to say you some pleasant words at the end. And today I wanted to say you uh, to send you a lot of traffic and uh, zero bugs vibes. So stay tuned. I hope uh, I will give you give you information about the new updates very soon. So thanks a lot again. Subscribe, thumbs up, uh, comments below in the YouTube or uh, our blog. It was a great uh, pleasure for me to tell you about the update. Have a great day. Bye bye.